Spagur, it's what's for breakfast. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Study Brews, a brew talk. Today is Spagur. Specific gravity, and it has absolutely nothing to do with breakfast. It doesn't. Specific gravity. Let me just say what it is. Let me give you a definition. The ratio of the density of a substance to the density of a standard, usually water for a liquid or solid and air for a gas. What that means is if you use water as your standard, adding sugar to it or other things, oil, alcohol, whatever, will change the density. Okay. Using a hydrometer, you can measure that difference. And that difference when you're using sugar in a brew is how we calculate alcohol and sweetness and dryness and doneness. So we have a lot of questions on this one. I guess we're gonna go right to the questions. Well, well what did you want to say? I was I was gonna do a quick thing, but it's it's go fine. ahead, do a quick no, thing. No, 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 it's fine. That's because all that needs to be cut out now. So. Now I have to cut all that. Yes. <clears throat> Blue onion. What's your final gravity preference on the barley wine? Now that is on a barley wine, a very specific brew. It's probably going to be 1020 to 1030, simply because I know that there's going to be unfermentable sugars because it is a barley wine, also known as a beer, and also because I know I used two to three times the amount of gravity that you normally would have, which means probably at least double the unfermentable sugars. And since most beer ends at 1010, I'm expecting 1020 to 1030. Uh, we tested it the other day. It was at like 1055, which is a little high. So I'm hoping it keeps going. And it is actually fermented. It, it was still going. It's just going slow. Yeah, yeah. Um, P underscore sun. Not sure how to say that. Shouldn't you have taken the gravity reading before you pitched the yeast? We get this one a lot, and we've talked about this. Lately, we've actually changed to a dry uh, application method of the yeast. We just pour it on top, so it doesn't actually even make a difference. I think a lot of that comes from when people used to, like, maybe set up a brew and... I don't know, go on a bender for like three days and then come back and take a measurement. Well, by that point, it's already started. It's already making alcohol. Yeah, your, your measurement's completely inaccurate. So, yeah. But we do it both ways now. It's however I feel like doing it in the video. Before, when we weren't doing the dry pitch, um, it was more important for us to wait till after we added the yeast because lots of times we put it in a fruit juice and that would affect the gravity. Or even water would. Where would now that we tend to do more of the dry pitch, taking the reading before we pitch Doesn't is really matter. perfectly fine. Makes no difference at all. Um, Fawn Ricuti. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I've started a few one gallon batches of meat and your videos have been very helpful. Good. Although I don't have the gravity thing. I'm assuming she means a hydrometer. Is it super important? Yes. <laughs> I know she got one since this question. Yeah. I think it just came in. Um, any tips for first time brewing? We actually have an entire playlist for new brewers. And I'm, I put this question in because I thought that was important. She didn't know. And I know she's been watching a lot of our videos. We do. It's in the links below. And it's right here. And it's in a card. Go watch it. Marianne Sellier. Okay, so I didn't realize a stuck brew was so dangerous. I made a stuck brew that hardly fermented at all, and I racked it to bottle since it wasn't going anywhere with the gravity. Would you suggest I put it back in a carboy and add yeast, etc. again to keep it fermenting, or just use it with a vodka as a flavor agent? I made the crazy meat for this. Okay, as far as her options for that, there's there's a lot. She, she has it right. Mix it with vodka. Makes a nice cocktail. Um, you can also... What I, the reason it's dangerous, okay, I didn't mean to scare anybody, but the reason it's dangerous is because it's stuck at a high gravity. Now you bottle that. The act of bottling could stir up lease and could cause it to ferment. If it's too high, you can create an extraordinary amount of pressure and carbonation and they could explode. So that's why I don't recommend it. Um, probably best to degas this fully. I would fortify it beyond the tolerance of your yeast, and then it's safe. And that's what she meant by adding vodka. Is that what she used? Yeah, well, I mean, you could do it and make a cocktail. The problem is storage of that medium until that time. That worries me a the little bit. The reason why you add a neutral spirit to something with a high ABV like that is that you are elevating the alcohol beyond what the yeast can survive in. Exactly. So that's why you do You are it. essentially stabilizing it. Yeah. Uh, Drew Piercy. Hey, I know this isn't a mead video. I don't know what video this was on. <laughs> but I just made my first mead using EC1118 with a starting gravity of 1.116. Is that too much for the yeast? I only used half the packet. Any info would be great. Okay. Um, unfortunately, as you said, any info would be great. 
I don't really have enough information here to answer your question properly. But a starting gravity of 1116 is not too high for EC1118. That I, I can answer with, with, with ease. Using half packet, that means if you used my rules, you made up to three gallons. Okay, it should be fine. Should be okay. Raven 808, oh, no, it's Raven 808. Today I made a whole new brew. I put in there about 1.5 kilograms of honey. My gravity reading says 1.140. Is this too high for the yeast or does it matter? First, it does matter. Depends on the yeast you're using. 1.140 is rather high. Uh, according to a little chart that I made up because I just couldn't remember all the numbers in my head and I didn't put 1.140 on there. That is somewhere between 17 and 23%. So it's around 19%, which means depending on your yeast, yeah, it's probably too high or depending on what you're looking for. You want something super sweet? Well, you might. You might have it. I'm not trying to be wise, but that's the truth. And this is why we're doing this video to explain where in the range things go. Okay, we'll get to that in a few minutes. James Tarbit. I recently bottled your porter and worried when it did not ferment to 1.000. I forgot unfermentable stopped to 1010. What final gravity range should be generally expected for beer? That's a good question. In general, because beer does create unfermentable sugars, Anywhere from like a 10.05 to like 10.15, even up to 10.20 sometimes, depending on the beer, is normally an acceptable range. If your beer goes to 1.000, it's going to be a pretty unusual day. Um, they don't. They usually don't. 10.10 um, 10 is pretty common. 10.12, somewhere in there. Beyond that, there are some beers that require additives such as lactose. And if that occurs, then that's going to elevate it even more. Yeah, because it's a non-fermentable sugar. Yeah. So you'll have a higher gravity. Yeah, you get the idea. Jeff Carpenter, regarding starting out with a gravity that is too sweet to ferment, how much is that? Is 1.130 too much? 1.140? Just started a Christmas meat in that range. Will there be problems? The answer to that question is, it depends. I'm going to get to more of that in a little bit. But on to page two of the questions. I promise there's only a couple on here. <laughs> Tanner Carr, question. I recently started a traditional mead using your recipe. I don't know which recipe. I'm assuming the traditional. And with three pounds of local honey, my initial gravity only came out at 1.068. Seems too low. Any reason it would happen like that? Well, first reason that comes to mind is you made two gallons instead of one. I'll let that sink in. The other reason is it might not have been completely shaken up. The other reason is you may have just really read the hydrometer wrong. It's entirely possible. With three pounds of honey in a one gallon must, it should be about 1.105 within a few points of that, depending on how accurate you really are at a perfect gallon. Um, anything outside of that range, first, good looking out. You knew it was outside the range that it should be. That's kind of what this video is about, to give you an insight as to where should it be? So I know if I'm wrong, or I know if something went wrong. Kay Jones. So if we take a gravity reading, whatever that is, <laughs> that hurt, um, LOL. How do we fix the gravity if it's wrong? Do you have a video on that? Okay, thanks. Actually, we have a lot of videos on that, but wrong, your gravity can never really be wrong. It can be unfermentable, which I guess would be wrong, but it can't really be wrong. Like if you get anywhere from a 1080 to a 1.120 for a wine, you're in the range that's appropriate. A lot higher than that might be a problem. Lower than that, you just made cider. So it's not really a big deal. So basically, if your gravity is lower than what you're looking for, you're going to add more fermentable sugars. If your gravity is higher than what you're looking for, you're going to dilute the brew. Easy. It's really that simple. But how do you know what gravity you should be looking for? Well, that's easy. If you're making a beer or a cider, you want anywhere from like a 1020, one, that's 1.020, to, I don't know, 1050 to 1070 max. If you're making a wine, it starts at about that level, 1070 to 1080, and goes to about 1.120. Mead falls into that same category. I much prefer meads that are somewhere between 12 and 15% ABV. Going too much higher than that starts to stress the yeast, making it, well, not taste so good and needs a lot longer to age in most cases. Also, as you start getting to the stupid high numbers for alcohol content, <laughs> like the 25s and 28s, you're using usually turbo or distiller's yeast, which I know I've made statements about yeast before, but this time, 
I have actually tested this. I used a turbo yeast once, just once, and that was all it took. It made a 21% brew that tasted horrible. It was disgusting. We mixed it and just blended it off with other stuff. It was gross. However, those things are made to make high alcohol, not flavor. Whereas most of your wine yeasts and yeasts that are made for meads or ciders or beers, these are made with flavor in mind. So I prefer to use those because they actually make things taste good and that's why I do this. Anyway, I did put together a little chart here that shows some spigurs and ABV if they went dry, which means going to neutral technically, 1.000. Now, a point of note, and this is gonna get weird. As you go up in ABV, that means there's more alcohol. Alcohol has a lower spigur than water. It's actually 0.71 versus 1.000. So as you mix those two together, you technically get a dry brew below 1.000. That's why you might have seen like a 0.995 or even a 0.990. I've not heard of much lower than that because you got to be way up there in alcohol to get that point. But just to give you an idea. If your starting gravity is like 1.040 and it ends at 1.000, you have about a 5.2% alcohol content. Now, if it ends at anything above 1.000, you have a little bit more. If it ends below then, it's not likely in a brew that low, but if it did, you have a little bit more alcohol, okay? 1.060 is 8%. Same story, ending at neutral. Uh, 1.100, this is probably the sweet spot for wine and mead, okay? The 1.040, 1.050, that's a sweet spot for beers and ciders, all right? Just so you're aware, that's like five to 6%, perfect range. The 1100 to 1120 range is where I go for most wines and meads. And 1100 gives you 14.2% if it goes dry. That's why I say 1100 to 1120, because 1120 ending at 1.000 is the same thing as 1.100 ending at 1.000. You got that? <laughs> Basically, it's the same number of points being consumed, and that's how we measure specific gravity. You have your starting gravity and your ending gravity, and the distance between those, the difference, that is the sugar that was consumed by the yeast, and using that, we can calculate how much alcohol they produce, because that is pretty much a constant. They produce so much alcohol per so much sugar. As we go up the scale, this is when you're starting to get into the danger zone. 1.150 can create 23% alcohol. Now, I don't know of many yeasts that produce good flavors at 23%. Some people will tell me, oh yeah, I used EC 1118 and got 29%. I'm sorry, but no, you really didn't. You measured something wrong because it won't go that high. It's an 18% yeast. 23? Uh, maybe. maybe in perfect conditions you did, but not likely, okay? Um, more than likely, there's a measurement done wrong somewhere or an exaggeration somewhere because a lot of people like to say they made more alcohol than they really did. I don't know why. It's not like it's a contest. Whoever makes the most alcohol in their brew wins. It No. no. Whoever makes it taste the best wins. Yes. And then we have the silly numbers, like 1.180. That, if it went to 1.000, would be a whopping 29% alcohol, which is, I'm going to go on a limb here and say, probably, probably not possible by home fermentation. In a lab, perfect conditions, tons of additives, tons of stuff, scientists with, you know, goggles and white masks and stuff, they might be able to do it, but the average home brewer, probably not. Also, I want to point out that once you go past that 1.120 mark using natural fermentation methods, which is the way we promote it, you're really taking a risk on a stuck fermentation. What's a stuck fermentation? Well, this is where having a hydrometer comes in really handy. If I use our bourbon boche as an example, I made that with enough sugars to go to about 20% because I wanted it to stay a little bit sweet. I used an 18% yeast. It stopped when there was about 6% alcohol in there. Had I not used a hydrometer, I wouldn't have known that. I might have bottled it. I might have stirred up lease. It could have made bombs. It could have hurt any of us or our cats. It's a dangerous thing. That's why I promote the use of hydrometers. Not just to know how much alcohol you have, to prevent damage to you and your property. Okay. Um, these numbers of like 1180 and higher, they're pretty much not fermentable. It might not even start. And if it does start, it's going to stop most likely very quickly. The happy point for most yeast is 
uh, I would well it depends on the yeast every yeast has its own okay but like a typical yeast a typical wine yeast runs anywhere from 12 to 14 or 15 percent that's why we recommend the 1100 to 1120 range for most of those things now if you're using like a champagne yeast like an, an ec 1118 or even a high high gravity yeast like uh k1 v1116 those they can go to 18 percent but you still you're on that edge of you might overdo it and hurt that yeast now people say oh ec 1118 can shoot through anything well i, I can prove to you that it doesn't because <laughs> we've had it happen so i like that range of 1100 to 1120. now the next there's there's a workaround for that too though that if you want to keep your yeast happy but if you yep. want to get the higher ABV and you're working with the yeast that allows to get to that higher ABV, step feeding would be yep. the way to go because then they can... And for that, we've learned that you want to start at about a 1060, 1 1.060, and let that go dry. Then you add some more, let it go dry, add some more. We're actually doing a video on it, and um, ours is uh, having a little bit of troubles. So you might, if you watch that video, you'll get to see how we correct that and make it work anyway we're gonna beat it into submission the beatings will continue until morale improves anyway what i also want to talk about is on the other end of the scale how do you know when it's done and this is important and this requires a little bit of knowledge okay the easiest way is if it goes to like 1.000 or within a few points it's probably done give it a week check it again if it didn't move it's done but what if it stops at like 10 20 10 30 10 40 10 50 well now it depends on where you started and what you used okay like if you start with a say a 15 percent wine yeast and you started with a 1.150 gravity and it's at 1060 guess what it's probably done it's also going to be super sweet but it's probably done because your yeast kicked out it's done your yeast can only go so high so once it goes past that point the yeast just drops out of solution stops doing things it's kind of like when you fortify something to stop fermentation same idea you self-fortified except that this time there's too much sugar what can you do to kick that off again you can dilute it and it'll probably start off all on its own just add some water add some juice two batches done um as far as sweetness levels versus dryness levels this is very subjective but a general rule of thumb 990 to 1010 is considered dry by most people. We do have someone that told me that 1002 was far too sickly sweet for them. I wish I was that person because, man, we would never have to buy sugar again. <laughs> oh my God, 1002 to me is dry. That's, mm, can't do it, don't like it. 1010 to like 1020, 1025 is considered semi-sweet by a lot of people. Anything above 1025 is considered sweet or dessert wines at that point. Now, a lot of your ciders are actually going to be in like the 1020 to 1030 range. Beer can be, you know, 1010, 10, 1020, depending on how much unfermentable sugars. Wine, full range. Mead, full range. Some people love it super dry. Some people love it super sweet. Some things that I like sweeter than <laughs> sweeter than sweet, let's say, is a capsicumel because it's got the hot thing going. So hot and sweet together is a really nice combo. Those at 1060, I don't consider too sweet. So that gives you an idea. A lot of this is subjective and some of it comes from experience and you'll get to know what your sweetness level is that you like so that you can plan your brew to end that. Say, I, I like 1020 to 1030, so does Derica. So I plan a lot of our brews to end in about that range. That way I don't have to back sweeten. They're just ready to go. Now the yeast don't know the numbers. Yeah. So it can vary. That's why I said 1020 to 1030. If I say, I want this to be 1022, the odds of that actually happening, let's just say, go back and watch our videos. We have about 150 of them. I don't think it's ever happened where it ended exactly where I thought it would, within a few points, but never exactly. Because they are yeast. They are living things. They will do what they're going to do. And different musts, different juices, different acidities, different everything can change what they're willing to do or unwilling to do. One quick side note before we finish things up here, there is a another reading on the hydrometer that we've we've heard people in the comments Actually, two more. mention, and they mention it incorrectly, and that's the potential alcohol mm. in your brew. When you first create a brew and you take your reading, and if There's you no read alcohol, the yeah. potential alcohol, that's what potentially might perhaps occur. If it goes completely dry, that's what that means. So if. that's not 
your alcohol. Don't really go in by that. Room. It's not the best way to so go. So don't do that. Also, the bricks reading, if you have a, a three way. Um, I don't use bricks. A lot of winemakers do. It's more of a traditional thing. I don't really know much about it. So when people give me bricks numbers, I always say, huh? Because I don't, I, I don't really know. I've always used specific gravity, and I just carry that across to wines, meads, beers, all of it, because it does work. And the bricks reading is literally just another measurement. So, you know, switch. Use that. Hopefully this has helped. If you have more questions that we didn't cover, put them in the, the comments below. We will have more videos on this, hydrometers and things like that coming because we see this as a big thing. A lot of people are confused. They don't understand. So we want you to understand. That way, when you have a problem, you can explain to us and we can help you. And maybe you won't even have to ask us because you'll be able to figure it out yourself. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching, guys. and Have a great day. Bye-bye.